Uh, tell you what, uh, Dave Martinex here, a good friend from Recycle Frog. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Thank you. You brought along Sean Isaacs from Alliance Coins. How are you, Sean? Good, thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. So we've had an interesting couple of weeks where we've been collecting pennies and people are bringing in, uh, you know, their cans of coins, their piggy bank coins, whatever, uh, over the last few weeks. And as we go through them, we find coins that we have no idea what they are. So we thought it'd be fun to, to bring you in and maybe maybe we got some coins here that are worth something, maybe we don't. You never know. Yeah, that's one of the things about coins, eh? You really never know until you consult with an expert. Yeah, that's right. right. Well, I think the vast majority of coins that we see are, you know, fall into the standard circulation grade coins. Yeah. But then, you know what, There's a, there are rare coins and interesting ones. And Sean's There's a few uh, that uh, we found interesting there, mm -hmm. and some of them are hardly legible when it comes <laughs> to coins, right? Interesting. Yeah, these are these heavily worn ones are old British half pennies, which actually used to see circulation in Canada many years ago. Is that right? It's amazing how, you know, they could actually stay in circulation and wear down to that point. Yeah. Obviously, people appreciated the value yeah. of a copper. Somebody threw them in a bucket or a, or a can or that's a right. bottle, right? Yep. yep. Exactly. And that's yeah. probably just normal wear and tear, you know, the exchange of hands and, and you know, Over grazing so much up time against, yeah. That's it, yeah, that's a lot Erosion. of... Erosion, yeah. Yeah. We found, uh, we found uh, coins from all over the world. Like that, uh, that victory, that's a nickel, right? Uh, yeah, or from one it? perspective, it's actually fascinating. It's called a Tombeck nickel. The nickel was very important during the war effort, so they struck these for two years out of basically copper. Uh, very patriotic, it's got the B for victory, and you can't really see it in the picture, but around the edge, they actually used international code sort of as a propaganda message. So, fascinating piece. Uh, copper, like the penny, but five cent denomination. Yeah. Is it worth anything? Uh, not particularly because it was no. a big issue, 50 cents a buck for a typical example, but certainly more than a penny. Right. What, when people are, and we've got all kinds of them here from various parts of the world, There's a, we found a lot of uh, Euro coins and stuff. Yeah. Obviously people have been overseas and they have yeah. no use for them when they get back home, right? Um, how, like, oh, this one, this one that caught my eye, that's a, I think an older penny from Great Britain, I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we were just mentioning with your gentleman here, they're very slightly larger than the Canadian penny, so they easily pass in this part of the world. Right. right. And you said, like, here's something that we found. Um, some of them are just funny, like there is one, f um, a coin for a video machine. That's yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a, and you said when you looked at this group of uh, coins here, they're familiar faces, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, to me, the standout, you've got one from the Central African states here, which is probably the geographically uh, most remote piece you've got there. But yeah. Euros, British, uh, Swiss There's a lot of Polish coins we found in our... Uh, in our travels over the last few weeks, that's for sure. What, what the that. heck's that? I was going to say, that looks like a small Polish, yeah, one schlotty piece, one grozy piece from Poland. But for me, the standout's the Swiss franc. I mean, that's one of the most valuable yeah. currencies in the world. So is that right? You've got a, a, a buck, a buck and a quarter there, so. Is that right? Yeah. How do you, what do you do when, you, when you, you, know, you end up with a lot of coins like we have over the last little while? Do you just put them aside and then bring them to someone like you, if someone is in, in that situation? Definitely, yeah. yeah. If they're, I mean, David is, uh, and I both buy precious metal versions, but things like this that really don't have an intrinsic value, we're always interested in buying. We right. have a sheep trough in our store that has about half a ton of these coins, and then people love digging through and building their collections 25 cents at a time, so can never get enough of this material. The is thing that right? Yeah. So we should hold on to them, bring them over to you maybe, and see what happens? The, the challenge, I think, is that you've got volumes of encyclopedias that help, um, you know, Average coin collectors sort of determine what might be more valuable than just your run-of-the-mill coins. Yeah. Um, so you need an expert to actually look through those coins. Again, like I said, the vast majority of these are going to fall into the just you know melt them down for what their what their metal value is worth. But then occasionally you find a little gem, yeah. um, you know, that might be worth significantly more might than be the worth, face value. Uh, yeah, more than yeah. you know, there might be a penny that's worth uh, and, twenty-five cents. And the and the average viewer out there will have very little knowledge. I used to work at the Mint and, and met many people like Sean. Uh, numismatists who, who studied this their whole life. Yeah. Um, you can do this for a hundred years and probably know 10% about you know uh, yeah, all the yeah, coins out there. So, yeah. Before we go, you've got a big uh, show coming up, right? A big thing going on. We do actually on November 24th. We're having an open house, which is our own farewell to the penny. And on that day, okay. we're going to have on display the finest, rarest set of Canadian pennies that's ever been seen anywhere in the world. So, if anyone is at any interest in the heritage or to see you know way back to 1858 how beautiful pennies were, uh, this set will never be seen again. So, are you sad happens. about it? Um, well, they'll always be available to collectors, and I obviously suppose. we'll be seeing them for generation. But it's, I think it's a natural economic progression. Mm -hmm. uh, we have no idea what we're going to do with all these pennies. Because uh, <laughs> right now we're up over eighteen hundred dollars in pennies alone. I wow, think maybe that's we can, fantastic. We can yeah. probably find a way to help you out with that. Is perhaps. that right? Yeah. Excellent. I have a fun little twist too, Kurt. If you don't mind, uh, I was playing poker with my buddies last night, and I, I made a mental note: if I won, I was going to donate my winnings. So I've got a hundred dollars to throw on top oh, of your pennies. So thank you very much. I appreciate You're that. Welcome. And Sean, a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And uh, 
we'll, we'll be in touch if we find anything else uh, that we yeah. have no idea about. Always happy to have Very a Very interesting world, the, uh, the coin world. It is. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thank you. Hey, uh, by the way, you still have time to come in and uh, drop off some coins, or like uh, David did, you know, uh, his uh, poker winnings. If you won at poker last night, sure. <laughs> uh, come on by before 6 o'clock to 87 George and help us out with any drive for the Ottawa Senators Foundation.